Hello and welcome to Dance Teachers Academy. I am your host, Jose on the mic, and with me is the amazing Amay. How are you doing this morning? I am great this morning. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, we are treated today uh, with a friend uh, who's back, uh, actually a return engagement, Mr. Uh, Chad, Chad Grable. How are you doing? Yay! Doing fantastic. Oh, it's good to see you, man. It's a great day this morning. Yeah, it is. Every day another, you wake another, up, man, that's a good one. Another day above ground. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always great. And dancing. Yes. Able to dance. Absolutely. Dude, it's uh it's actually a pretty good day out there. I uh it's kinda close as they say, you know, with the humidity and whatnot, but uh it's actually nice. Had a little breeze earlier. You know, gotta get out and enjoy that cigar on the patio. Mm, not a cigar fan. <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, enjoy for us. Yeah. Yes, enjoy I might. I us. might just do that. So, um, and last we met, we were um, discussing uh, country dancing, and I mm-hmm. believe worlds were coming up. Um, Explain worlds, to me exactly what that is, because I'm a novice. I have no clue. The UCWDC, which is United Country Western Dance Council, okay. their world championships are held every year around New Year's. It's over that really that week. Um, it's a week long competition. Um, this Ooh, year was big. in this year was in San Francisco. I think they had oh. um, over about five thousand dance entries. Good lord! Take. So yeah, just a, a few. Yeah. And uh, Christ, was, how many judges does it go through uh, for um, a comp that big? Most co- most of the contests, I think, as a matter of fact, all of them have seven judge panels, and the judges work really hard. I was say, man. I mean, judged, right? um, I was actually on support staff for that. I was not judging this uh-huh. time around. So you got to party a little bit. <laughs> the support staff still does a lot of work. It's not oh. people. I, I think people don't realize how much planning and work has to go into just the running of the dance competition, not the actual dancing part of it. I and can't judging, even imagine. But I can't, yeah, I can't imagine. Getting 5,000 dance entries registered, making sure everybody's in the right category, making sure everybody's eligible to dance mm-hmm. because you have to qualify. Uh, you have to dance at three regional events to oh, qualify okay. to oh, okay. dance at World. So you, so you, you can't just I, arrive at World. No. Um, there are a few exceptions, Places like South Africa, where there aren't a lot of competitions around them. Oh, okay. They had a huge contingent from South Africa. Um, a lot of line dancers, not so many couples. Um, and then, what does that mean exactly? Uh, line dancing is its own set of competitions. Really? Yeah. And then you have couples competition, and that's the couples. I understand couples that they... and pro am and such, but okay. they also have line dance, and they are some amazingly talented people. Wow! I, I mean, did not know that. And right, well, from, there you go. We just got school all over. One of the one of my favorites to watch, although she didn't compete this year because she was dancing couples instead, was a young lady from the Netherlands. Wow! Satu Kataliper. So they're That's all out there line dancing, and they're judged in the group. Mm, in some cases, yeah. In the upper divisions, they do solos. Oh, and wow. they do a lot of their own work, okay. and they pick their own music and stuff like that. So yeah, and you have to be very entertaining to dance by yourself. Um, one of my friends, we were sitting there watching them one time, and his comment was, you may as we well be out there naked. Because at least when you're dancing couples and something goes wrong, hide. there's someone to hold on to. Yeah. When you're dancing line dance, it's just you. Yeah. And so it's amazing to watch these people dance. Wow. It's phenomenal. I'd yeah. like to see that. that I'm going really to I'm have to scope that out. Yeah. If you do a search for line dance in UCWDC on YouTube, there's tons of videos. So we can certainly show you some. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing to watch. Very, very talented people. Yeah. And so you were part of the support staff, meaning helping to run the competition, check on things. Um, mostly, mostly pre-event registration. Um, a good friend of mine is a registrar for it. She lives here in Fort Worth. So I go help her out. Um, and then lots of other things in the background set up although not the physical part, they, they have an amazing set that is like on several tractor trailers that go around to wherever oh, the wow. event is. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. The amount of, of work that goes 5,000 people. That's a lot of cats to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dancers. Yeah. So they, 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 they follow rules so well. <laughs> right. You know, we talk about that cause you're planning. And so I know I really try to get my, 
uh, I do get my entries in early. I want. I don't want to be the thorn in the organizer's <laughs> side that's bringing right. my entries. You don't, you don't want to be that one. one. No, yes. I don't want to be that one. But there's a lot of people. Uh, well, I will say there's a few people that um, will. Send in their entries late. Push it's the like, limits. Can you please get me in? And yeah, <laughs> and and it that's going to be the case regardless. And it's not necessarily that those people are inconsiderate, but sometimes you don't know whether you have the time off work or you you know you're trying to find flights or or whatever. Yeah, something. it's so, a human mistake. So, yeah, it actually, yeah. some people make just a mistake. Yeah. Cause um, and there have been all kinds of stuff. I've again worked with registration a lot, and there are people that you know. Thought they had registered and hadn't. And <laughs> yes. How do you, how do you I, miss something? No, like um, I think it's pretty easy because recently a professional couple, and they're really top, they had done all their entries for all their students, and you know, and they are very responsible <clears> and they <throat> took care of all these details. They had been competing a lot. Then they were going for their own competition, just the two of them professionally in England arrived only to find out they had forgotten to register themselves but they were just trying to take care of so many things <laughs> now they were allowed to you know uh, compete which is great because it was just such an honest mistake they had thought they registered they had it, th- what we didn't yeah <laughs> stuff stuff especially just like girls we have hair makeup we got to get our shoes our costumes our eyelashes our jewelry have you seen the new led <laughs> eyelashes what no. <laughs> They have false eyelashes with LEDs on them. It's I don't I, I'm know. waiting for that to hit dancing. It should make things really wow. interesting. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I would like that. <laughs> In yeah, my that's, eyes. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I mean, seriously. It's, it's a pretty intense look. I bet. I mean, I could see fiber optics or something like there. Ba- yeah. Probably that's basically what it is. Yeah, right? it's, yeah. It, they're very... I mean, they technology has gotten amazing. Even... With the stuff that they do for dancing in the dance costumes, the fabrics they have now compared to what we used to dance yeah, in you know, I 20 to years ask ago. You about that. Yeah. yeah, because I've noticed uh, we recently saw a, a couple dance and they uh, had a world title, Country Western. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's a Latin costume. That's sort of one of my uh, pet peeves. I wanted to ask you about that. The costuming for Country Western has gotten a little bit past where I think it should be um, <laughs> as, as a judge and as a dancer. My thing is, for instance, the guys wearing tuxedo pants, oh. which, which is very common at ballroom. Yes. Uh, almost, almost that's part of the, the uniform. Right. My que- yeah. yeah. My, my question would be, would you go to a ballroom event and compete as a professional or as an amateur or whatever wearing jeans and boots and a hat no you wouldn't because it's not suitable for the venue you're dancing in. right right well you're wearing ballroom attire yes for a country western dance event yes it's not quite right for the venue that i have you're to dancing say it in. bothers me it and and, and it, 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 i love latin costumes yeah. i mean i love costumes <laughs> yeah. but i just i'm like I, I don't yeah. know, there's just something in my mind, it's like, it's just not it, right well, and, visually. I and can't really put my finger on it. You don't have to look like a reject from Hee Haw <laughs> to dance wearing country western attire. No, no offense to Hee Haw watching. <laughs> um, but you know, you understand what I'm talking about. You don't but have it's to. it's the uniform that's interesting yeah. way to say yeah. that. I yeah. mean, you know, but you look at, uh, especially even international style, the guys have one thing to wear. And it's a tail suit, and it's very tailored, and, mm-hmm. and there are certain things that they do for dancing tail coats that they wouldn't do for a normal one just because of how you're moving and how you're holding yourself. But at the same time, in, in country western, I would like to see as a judge and as, as a even just as a spectator, more country western attire on the floor. It, it, it takes away from what you're doing. Yes. And it doesn't yeah. it doesn't take a lot. I mean, like a lot of the guys are like, oh, I could never dance in jeans. They're too restrictive. And it's like, I get that. Did you have those pants custom made? Well, of course I did. Or they well, like, why don't you? Why don't you have them made in a country western cut instead of cut more for ballroom? Or stretch jeans or whatever They're, I mean, they make any number of things. Yeah. But, I mean, even if it's custom made, 
why not have it custom made so that it is is appropriate for the venue that you're dancing in. Yeah. Do you, uh, as a judge, do you kind of, you know, mark them down a little bit when they... That is, that is partially one of the things we're told to take into account. Um, oh, okay. Back in the day, they used to have, I mean, the, the scoring system and, and country western dancing is, I wouldn't say any longer in its infancy, but it's maybe kind of reached adolescence. Okay. Um, this World Championships was, I believe, World's... 30 maybe, I think. And They're also relatively new. Blackpool has been going on for over 100 years now, right? Yeah. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Something like that, yes. So country western dancing, competitive country western dancing, has is still kind of figuring out things that and how it wants to work things. Yeah, and I like I get what you said about it's in an adolescence. And it's rebelling a little bit, like <laughs> an adolescence. Apparently. <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> they, there used to be codes on the, the judging ballots mm-hmm. that you could tick for if someone had a timing issue, and that's why you marked them down, or there was a floor craft issue, or costuming. And, and the problem with costuming is I get... You know, the ladies want to look pretty. The guys want to look nice. You want to get out there and present a certain picture. Mm-hmm. But if you're dressed for ballroom, go to a ballroom competition. If you want, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to dress ballroom, go to a ballroom competition. Yeah. If you want to dance country, and you can say that I'm an old fart and a fuddy duddy, but I really <laughs> think you should dress country. I don't think so. I I don't think that. You're an old fighter of Fetty Duddy at all because... Well, I am, but that's beside the point. Yeah, <laughs> Don't tell your brain that. <laughs> so, no, but... Well, I'm go, forego so the important. obvious. This could be definitely the title of, um, you know, this podcast. How important is costuming to competition? Because we were watching ice dancing, Olympic ice mm-hmm, dancing last yeah. night. And I was watching, and I mean, these are amazing athletes and artists. And very talented people. Yes, yes they and are. And I was looking at the, the costumes, and that's what it is. It's distracting. And if you distract from the dancer, then you it, it, it takes away. So I feel like costuming is so important. So I watched this ice dancer. Unbelievable. But whoever designed her costume decided to put fringe on the leg. Now, this is a lady with beautiful legs. And I find myself looking at this fringe on the leg, just kind of like a little Uh, tail or something. Mm -hmm. And all it did was distract me. And so I wasn't looking at her dancing. Then, on the other hand, then there was these other couples that came from the different... And I was, wow, that is an amazing costume. And it really flatters her. And now I'm engrossed in her dance right. their dance it's it's an accent to what you're doing so it, so i'm i'm glad we're talking about this because i have to say when i watched that couple um they were doing a special show dance i thought that costume is a great costume but it looks weird to me with cowboy boots yeah it just didn't work for yeah. me and i found myself getting distracted yeah they it's 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 Again, another a friend of mine, this is the same lady that does a lot of the registrations. Um, before she moved out here, she lived in California, and she actually holds the record. They don't do this anymore, but she holds the record for a number of awards for costuming oh, wow. in, in country western. And she's a registered, uh, I forget what she calls it, like a stylist or, or personal stylist. Oh, okay. And... She talks about the fact that the the costume that you're wearing should make you feel good. Yes. You should feel good in it. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't worry about things going astray. Wardrobe malfunctions. From, or, or failures in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. To, to that I mean, end, I, I must have missed I, that I, I was No, I actually saw one young lady, and again, amazingly talented, was dancing with one of her students, and she had a halter dress on. And the halter came loose, and she managed to catch it. She put the strings of the halter in her teeth and finished the last 30 seconds of the dance. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, and, and just nothing was amiss. And I was like, wow, that is, to me, consummate professional that you can manage to get that done. 
put and, it in your teeth. Uh, and not not distract your student, finish the dance. I don't know that he necessarily noticed anything was wrong. Because <laughs> you know, stuff like that happens. You get focused in the moment. And it's like, where did that happen? And, you know, and but just amazing, amazing. But it should make you feel good. It should accentuate your your body and not detract or draw attention to parts you might otherwise not want people to look at. Right. It has um, to be flattering to your figure. Right. And 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 that's that's something that uh, I see a lot as you you watch people go out there and and unfortunately I think in a lot of cases people don't go up to them and say you know, and, and even their pros don't say anything to them, which I think is is very wrong. Doing them a disservice, I would imagine. I mean, you're, you're not I, just being paid to be to teach the dancing. You're being paid for your entire experience in what you're doing. And it's like, I'm sorry, that dress really doesn't flatter you as much as I would like to see you out on the floor. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can find a different design that makes you look better. And there are designs for all shapes and sizes. Absolutely. And our friend Absolutely. Donna Hamza is so great oh, at Oh, she's amazing. Yeah, it doesn't matter your size, your shape. She makes that oh, yeah. lady look and, beautiful. And and she knows time, how to accentuate yeah. the And there are so many other parts. dressmakers out there that are just wanting to sell a dress. Yeah. And, and I find that unfortunate. Yes. I, I really do. I, I do agree with you, though. I feel like it is a professional's responsibility to Absolutely. make sure their student looks right and not in a something that... Well, it, it's like, you know, just in everyday life. If you've got spinach or pepper or something in your teeth, you would want someone to tell you. Otherwise, you're going to spend the whole day going around talking to people. It's like, it's that in their teeth, you know? And, you know, you would want someone to say something. Well, it's the same thing with the costume. You know, it's yes. like... And, and, and there are ways to say things. I mean, I... A lot of times am rather abrupt. I actually had one student, bless her heart, her memory. She was in her 90s. And uh, <laughs> you I, did not I just go looked after at her, her and I'm like, sweetheart, we need to get you a new ball gown. She's like, but I like this gown. I'm like, yes, but you look like you're going to have puppies. She's like, I beg your pardon? I'm like, the cups for the dress are here and you wow. are down here. <laughs> you look like you're going to have puppies, sweetheart. We need to get you. And she's like, oh, okay. And got a new dress and she looked gorgeous in it. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> gonna, gonna have puppies. <laughs> See, I mean, but it's that, important. It, it's, it's how you yeah. say it, and, uh, and you know, and I, I developed she a certain will never rapport. Forget that. I'm sure she never <laughs> forgot that. Um, but I mean, you know, it, it, every every teacher has their own way of saying things, and sometimes wow. I'm I really am surprised I don't get slapped more often than I do sometimes with the way I talk to my students. Sometimes it is all men and fun, and I don't mean to be insulting to anybody. But well, at the I same think it's time, better to have something harsh to say, but the heart behind it is and, with love and with. And, a, and I try and say it as a joke too, to kind of like yeah, yeah. Like, a little bit. But you're not trying to be you're before you're trying to be helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think. Um, I, I feel like we're talking about students, but I sometimes look at professionals out there dancing and I have pulled them aside and it's not an easy conversation and I don't think they appreciate me, appreciated me saying it, but I did anyway. I said, you're a professional. You need to have a costume that looks like a professional. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's... You have that's, to represent that's, yourself. That's the thing. And, and sometimes and, that means investing and that's the thing. Uh, yeah. The, a nice costume is expensive there's no question about it right. but as a pro that you can also you know that goes it's a professional expense correct if you, if you have a person that's doing your taxes that knows their stuff it's like that's my dance shoes any music that i buy this is part of my profession that's right well i just think that too though uh people try to cut corners and i will <laughs> say if you can't cut corners there if you it shows it does. Yeah. You get what you, you pay for. You get what you pay for um, in costumes. If you you know, think, look what I got, and it's yeah. X amount of money. Because even if it looks good in that moment, like uh, a really good costume designer, you can wash that costume, and it's going to still be... Look the way it's look, supposed to be. Yes, like when you got it. And some people look at me funny about that, but there are some designers that are very expensive. But if you wash that costume... It starts to look warm, fall apart. Yeah, yeah and it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. So, but yeah, don't but even get me yeah, started no, no, no. about I mean, costumes. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had costumes from Donna, and 
um, from 20 years ago and they were still in good shape. Not that they're yes. in, in style anymore, right. but they're still in good shape. Um, I don't know that anybody would use them anymore, but I did. Uh, there's actually a, a good friend of mine and she donates a tremendous amount of her time and effort to working with uh, the kids down at Texas Ballroom in Austin at UT. Uh-huh. And does everything for them pro bono, dances with them, no charge. Amazing person. Her name is Sherry Reynolds. If you get to Austin, amazing, amazing dancer, she teacher. She with kids. Um, she works with college kids. College kids. And does it all pro bono. Doesn't charge them for the lessons, doesn't charge them to dance at the comps. I mean, they're in college. They don't have any money to start with. Well, that's so really how does she make money? Um... She is, I believe, retired now, and uh, I believe she was an accountant or owned an accounting firm. Oh, okay. And, you know, so, but it's it's amazing Spreading to watch Spreading the love her. of dance. Absolutely. And that's, that's you know, that's we might have why to get her we all on. do this. I yes. mean, really, I mean, it's... it's. Um, By the way, I like your costume oh, thank today. You. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh... But no, I mean, that's... You this know, is a before-the-show joke I, that we were having. Uh, I, I, I tell people that, you know, it's like, I could do other things. I have a bachelor's in molecular biology. Wow. I could, I could have gone many other directions in my life, and I found that I not only enjoy dancing a lot and had a small amount of talent for it, but that I really enjoyed teaching and, and imparting to others... What dancing has done for me, you could not give me enough money to give that back. Mm. And and to help others find that direction, too, I just I find very rewarding. So what did your parents say after you got your degree in molecular biology um, and decided to be a dance instructor? My mom was like, are you sure you don't want to go to medical school? She's like, I'll pay for it. I'm a good Jewish mother. I'll pay for you to go to medical school if you just... And I'm like, I at that point I was kind of done with school for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had a friend who was opening a studio up here in Fort Worth. <clears throat> Moved up here, started teaching for him, and you know, twenty five years later or so, I'm still teaching and enjoying every moment of it. So you know, our friend Diane Corbett's, mm-hmm. uh, she had got a degree in teaching, and uh, she. Uh, as a summer job, started as a dance instructor. So she, Long she summer. will say, "Yeah, I'm still doing my summer job." Yeah, her parents were like, "What? But you got this, you know?" Yeah. She had something set up already. Yeah. I, I she was, just fell in love with her yeah. summer job. There you go. And you know that, like I said, and and again, I'll say it again. You could not give me enough money. That's the thing. To give back what dancing has done for me. What and, has dancing done for you? Um, I used to be shy. You? <laughs> I know. It's shocking. Yeah, it's 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 shocking. Like, yeah. Um I I just the sheer joy of getting out on the floor and in all honesty sometimes feeling like you become a different person. Mm-hmm. It's like putting on I I imagine actors kind of do the same thing that mm-hmm. you put this character on mm-hmm. like like a costume or a set of clothes mm-hmm. and you become that person for, you know, the 90 seconds that you're dancing. You know, I'm dancing with a student and we're dancing to like a nightclub two-step or a triple two, which is more a ballad love song kind of, of uh, music for it. And for that moment, and I have students, they laugh at me on practice because I get this look in my face and they're like, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's that's my rom- what the song is about. That's what this dance is about. And they're like... That's my romantic face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in character. <laughs> Apparently not much doing a lot for them, but you know what? Well, you're, as long as you're happy. Is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's part of it is that you get to be someone else. I, it's I, part I, of the fun. Yeah. I, you, it, it's fantasy. I mean, if, if you've ever been at a comp, it, especially a ballroom comp, and you go downstairs at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Friday when the comp is starting... And, you know, if it's an NBC Suites, everybody's in the buffet line getting breakfast, but the ladies are all done up, the guys are in their tail suits, the hair slicked back, whatever. And there's some poor businessman that's <laughs> wandered downstairs thinking he's walked into a Fellini film somewhere. <laughs> right. What in the hell is well, going on? They're, they're checking their watch. It's like it's at 8 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock at night. And what's going it's, it's Did very, I oversleep? <laughs> it's very surreal. And, it's, and, and again, I, I kind of feel for the guys that sort of walk into it. 
but it really is kind of funny. I've seen the look, uh, <laughs> but yeah. It's like, what's going on here? And uh, so it, it is complete and utter yeah. fantasy. Or you run into them in the elevator, they're like, Oh, that's a nice dress. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, only three thousand dollars at damn well better be a yeah, nice right. dress. Yeah, right. <laughs> three, is, five. Yeah, this what is, are you this is what about? I wear for breakfast every morning. <laughs> I, I have seen that look though, and especially in the, uh, in the, uh, look. oh yeah, the look, you know, they walk into uh, an elevator and they see this and they're like, you know, boink, hey, what the heck's going on? Yeah. They're not even sure they want to get on. I'm like, I, you know, I'll just get the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on here, but I'll get well, the again, next it's, one. It, it, again, I, I make the joke. It is very Fellini-esque because it's, it's so non sequitur. Everything is, it's like something doesn't belong here. And I'm not sure whether it's me or them, but I think I'll wait. <laughs> I'll come back later. With the ballroom attitudes, it's yeah. you, of course. Yeah. We always look like this. Yeah, but I mean, even in country, I mean, the the outfits that people wear are still rhinestoned and, mm-hmm. and blinged out, and and you know, the the funniest thing is the hat box. If you're if you're traveling with a country western hat and you're flying, they have a box that you put the hat in to protect it. Yeah. Um, and people are like. It's kind of dome shaped, and you know, to fit a hat. People are like, "What's in that box?" And I'm like, "It's a racing turtle." Yeah. <laughs> and there are people that actually believe you. <laughs> oh, racing turtle. We wax the shell and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the wind resistant. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. God, that's funny. I have seen those boxes as well, but yeah. you know, it's it's obvious what's in there. <laughs> well, but you live in Texas, so it's kind of yeah. But there are some people like from way up north and you know yankees and whatever that they look at that it's like what is that for and I'm like, oh. a racing turtle yeah, absolutely <laughs> it was interesting that you said about all these people from all over the world like south africa and your favorite line dancer from the netherlands what's her name satu kataliper <laughs> it's a hell of a name right yeah there. Uh, well the country western is all over the it's, world um some of the newest competitions i think they have are in malaysia japan korea wow. Really? Oh, um, they're that. working on getting one in China, but that's a whole rigmarole to kind of get the government. Because of course, in China, the government has to be on board with it and all of that stuff as well. So it's 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 pretty amazing, and we've got some very talented people here that travel over there to help them, you know, kind of get things started. And they've done a lot of amazing work. It's really it's really amazing. But honestly, country western music is some of the most listened to music worldwide. And that sounds shocking to a lot of people, but it really is very, very popular. I know that surprises me uh, when someone said that, because I have a student, a newer student, who was born in India. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh yeah, my grandfather listened to country western music all the time. I was in, like, India. in India. In India, India. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so it's... it's so, it and really that is. was many years ago, yeah. so... It's it's a it's worldwide. What do you um, think is appealing about country western music worldwide? Um, the thing that I find appealing, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I just can't stand the twang to it and all that." I'm like, "You have to listen to the lyrics." I'm 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 a person when it I hear about the lyrics, when I listen it? to music, I really hear lyrics. There are some people. It's like they're they're singing to this. I just heard. Them. <laughs> I just it's just what you hear, um, and it's different for everybody. But I yeah, hear I'm, lyrics. I'm about and, the music, not the and not the, the, lyrics so the lyrics are really very very witty in a lot of cases Mm -hmm. um there's i i any number of examples i don't necessarily that any of them are you know sometimes uh popular for uh public consumption but uh i mean you know people talk about rap music being you know vulgar and stuff like that and country western has some pretty uh graphic descriptions going on too but a little uh, bit beyond racy um (laughs) Sewing oats at skinny dip in time. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. There's, There's uh, always that. Yeah, and that's a polka that gets played a lot at, at some of the comps, and it's got a good beat, And but I don't think people listen to lyrics. I personally, there's a, a two-step that I like uh, that I can't get one of my DJ friends to play, and it's personally, I think, my theme song. It's called I Don't Look Good Naked Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, what do you dance like, oh to that? God, I can't play that. And I'm like, you play three songs about skinny dipping. There's a two step, a polka, and I think one's a cha cha. Uh-huh. And you don't want to play this one? I, I don't get your logic, but you know, that's just me. 
<laughs> so some of those country western songs, the title is like great one liner. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, absolutely. There's um, this is a lyric in an actual song. I'm so miserable without you. It's almost like you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! <laughs> another oh, one. Another I, one. I like. To. Another one is it's hard to kiss the lips at night that chew your ass out all day long. So I mean, the, that's the, some wise words. <laughs> <laughs> so there really is wow. a lot. If you listen to the words to the songs, there really is a story going on behind it. It's not just the same. Um, a lot of pop music, even you know, fifteen years ago, was as as early as 15 years ago it's just the same line over and over and over again and it's like yes. okay i got yeah, you it, it's a catchy you know it's a catchy line the melody's great i'm bored after the fourth time yeah the the i find country western music a lot of the songs really do have a story there's a beginning a middle and an end to it oh interesting yeah so it's that that's what kind of catches me with it and and there's because of that there's some feeling behind the music and something you can actually express in your dancing gotcha you know that's one of the things that we talk about for the judges training is the the character of the dance what is the emotion behind the dance what is the feeling behind the dance and this is common in ballroom too i don't think it's accentuated as much because things in ballroom have become in some cases so regimented but that there's a feeling that you're trying to portray you're trying to tell a story and really good dancers regardless of the genre do that when they dance mm-hmm. but in in country western dancing that's actually one of the things that we place a lot of emphasis on is how does the dance make you feel what is the music saying to you so that when you go out and dance to this and, and granted, that's at a high level of dance. Beginners are not expected to do that. They're still worried about, you know, which foot goes where. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, oh, I have an arm and I'm supposed to do something with that too? You're asking a lot. So, I right. mean, do we, and, and as, you know, and as judges, we get that, that, you know, at, at a newcomer level, you're expected to exhibit timing and stand up reasonably straight, you know, as you progress through to novice and intermediate and advanced, which is very similar to bronze. Mm-hmm silver gold and open in ballroom is the analogy i use for a lot of people there uh there are different expectations for each of those levels and what you're supposed to exhibit on the dance floor and so you know at 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 an advanced level you should be able to tell me a story with your dancing i agree and and that's you know something that that's a tall order in 90 seconds you would be amazed you would be amazed. I mean, you've been to a lot of the ballroom comps, and when you watch some of these really good people, they pull you in on the first. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're walking out on the floor, and all of a sudden, you're, you're paying invested attention. in what they're doing. Yeah, you're paying and, attention, sure. And it's, yeah, so it's, it's you can say a lot in 90 seconds. Yeah, you can. And it can be good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> you can get yourself in a lot of trouble in 90 seconds, too. Yeah, so, that's a, right? that's a, you know, <laughs> 10 seconds into it, you're already. Yeah. So, oh, damage control. <laughs> yeah. Dance those dances, too. <laughs> All righty. Well, we're going to let you uh, move on and get on with your day. So, uh, Chad, thank you for uh, showing up again uh, for us. My pleasure. I enjoy Such it. Such a pleasure to have you yeah. here. You're fun. There you are. <laughs> it's all about fun. If you're not having fun, you need to find something else to I'm, do. Yeah, I'm, right? glad, I'm glad you climbed out of that shell. <laughs> <laughs> People never believe me. Yeah, right. Never yeah, believe sure. me. I was shy once, but only once. <laughs> I may thank you for, uh, for joining thank us as well. Thank you. This has been so enjoyable. Thank you so much again, Chad, hey, for being pleasure. here. All right, Absolutely. folks. Well, this has been another episode of Dance Teachers Academy. Thank you for watching.